who are live in Jerusalem on day nine of the Al Nakba. Have a listen to what the report says about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Doctors in Gaza say they fear thousands could die because hospitals are running desperately low on generator fuel and basic supplies. Palestinians in the besieged strip are struggling to find food, water and safety as they brace for a ground offensive. Israel continues to urge Gazans to flee to the north, giving them more time to take the main road to the south. The Rafa crossing, the only exit not controlled by Israel, remains shut as Egypt refuses to allow foreigners out until Israel agrees to let vital aid in. The UN estimates that almost half of Gaza's population have left their homes, the number of people in Khan Yunis more than doubling. But even the south has been hit by Israeli airstrikes, which Gaza's health ministry says have killed more than 2,450 people. Tensions have also escalated. Now, let's look at the whole situation here. And i just to quote the Palestinian poet Mahmoud Dawish, who was the poet of the, the second al Nakba, And we'll go to the actual maps of the area um, that we're looking at. So a people's applause for those who face their own erasure with a smile and the tyrant's fear of songs. We have on this land all of that which makes life worth living on this land. He's talking about Palestine and the part that we're looking at now is Gaza and we're trying to understand what is going on? Israel, the most powerful army in the region, is attempting to drive the Palestinians from their homeland for the third time in 75 years. The Palestinian resistance stands alone, save for the support of ordinary people across the world. Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, Morocco, Indonesia, even in the Western world, there are big demonstrations for example, in London, there was a demonstration of, of over 10,000 people, over 10,000 people in Melbourne, over 6,000 in Adelaide and over 2,000 in Brisbane. So leaders have forsaken this country and constructed a wall of lies assisted by some utter nonsense that we see in the media, in the parliaments and on the internet. So let's take a look at how Israel is attempting to fight the resistance um, in Gaza, in the occupied territories and in Lebanon and in, in Syria. Okay, there's been a lot of nonsense about what is happening. I wanna make this short video just to give you some basic geopolitical realities about this region. So we're looking now at a map uh, where Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, uh, what is called by the English, the Middle East, east of where I ask, or what I call the Levant in the center of the screen. That's what we're looking at now. Um, so as we zoom in, so there we have it. We've got all of the, the Levant there stretching. This is one of the earliest parts of human civilization here. Um, uh, coming up from the Rift Valley, people came up here and they set up all kinds of, of um, different societies. Um, so if we zoom in, we can have a look at the current situation in Palestine itself, that area with the red cursor showing there. So, and... We can see that the Gaza Strip itself is a very small parcel of land, um, really not much bigger than, say, Washington, D.C., or smaller than, than Brisbane, smaller than Melbourne. I think it's about 180 square kilometres. Um, and if we it's it's on the edge of the Mediterranean and in the north of that strip is Gaza City, which the Israeli military 
is intending to invade. And they've been bombing all of that strip, um, Gaza City, Khan Yunus, and down right down to the Rafa crossing in the map there. Um, they've been doing that over the last eight or nine days. Um, along this line here is the 1950 Armistice Line. It's, it's not meant to be a border. It's just where uh, after the Six Day War, that's in 1967, that's where the, the, um, that line was changed. But after the 1948 Al Nakba, that's where the agreement line was for, or the Green Line. Now, the people who designated that, they didn't consult and, and the Palestinians were not party to the drawing of that line. Um, and in more recent years, Ariel Sharon, when he was prime minister, he got rid of the settlements in this area and it became a place for the refugees from the previous wars. So all the refugees came from all of these towns here and they were forced into the Gaza Strip. Um, now, that they've told 1.1 million people who are already refugees from that area, um, they've, they've told them to evacuate south down over this uh, this wadi us this wadi here it's just a it's a sort of um a, a water reserve kind of thing some of it is can be a dry spring or whatever so everyone like they said in the report before the population of Khan Yunus has doubled um now there are a number of things that have taken place. One of them is that the conflict has been broadened out somewhat. So uh, this has been largely, largely uh, done by the Israelis and they have requested and received not one but two huge American aircraft carriers and that have come here. And the, 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 these ships, like they're the biggest aircraft carriers in the world. Uh, the Gerald Ford, and I think the other one's called the Eisenhower. So th they are treating this, the Americans are treating this as if um, Gaza is some kind of nuclear power. <laughs> but we know that their their rationale, their, their tactics are they want to keep um, Iran out of the conflict and they're, so they're, they're bringing in all these, these forces. Um, and these ships are sitting off the, the, the coast here um and they if you if you look at it they they basically control all the seas the uh, israeli air force controls all the air and in the west bank here in nablus janine uh, there's been a lot of execution of palestinians by Israeli uh, uh, settlers and also um, the Israeli uh, army. And if we go further north, uh, you can actually see that th there, there's been an attempt to bring um, under control under the the control of the Israelis to actually bring. Um, to make sure that there is no logistical support from any other country. So the Israeli Air Force has bombed the the airport in Homs. They've also bombed the airport in Damascus, the, the capital. Um, and I think the only airport open is Latakia at the time of this, um, of this discussion. Um, that is to prevent uh, Iran from sending in uh, more supplies and support uh, into 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 the area. Now, the the this what we're here, looking at here is a colonial expansion, and that's 
really what they're trying to take all of the land, both in Gaza and in the West Bank. And they're trying to expel the people uh, by use of force, by bombing, um, by incursion with tanks and infantry and, and you know, a military push. They are concerned about Hezbollah in the north, that is in Lebanon, because Hezbollah has a lot of rockets, a, a number of missiles, and they they ha drove in the July war in 2006, they managed to drive the Israelis out of southern Lebanon, and but not before the Israelis had bombed the Beirut uh, International Airport. Yeah, that's, that's here. So um, Israel is, is willing to do whatever it takes to um, expand the conflict and at the same time focus very strongly down here in the south and to get rid of uh, the Palestinians from the Gaza Strip. Um, that's sort of a, a state of play. Uh, we're eight days into the siege of Gaza by Israel and um, I'm, I'm led to believe that a lot of the towns that have been evacuated by the Israeli military, that's all of these towns around here, Sidot, uh, Ashkelon, the, the Israeli military uh, sending the Israelis out of there, cleaning out those towns so that there's, they won't be involved in, the, um, in whatever kind of uh, military bombardment that they that they use um, in this ethnic cleansing of uh, the Gaza Strip of, of all the, uh, the Palestinians. Um, so we really have a, a terrible situation and um, we, we sort of really hope that the people's resistance is strong and that the international community is able to persuade um, the United States to get Israel to pull back. So this is Ian Kerr from 4PR Voice of the People signing off. Thanks for listening.